Hey everybody, welcome to the Baca Wines virtual happy hour. Um, we're so glad to have everybody here. My name's Alexandra and I run our social media. So you haven't seen me on screen before, but if you've ever messaged us or um, tagged us in a photo, you've probably spoken to me before. So it's really nice to meet you all virtually and I'm excited, really excited to be hosting today because we have two special guests. One guest is our director of winemaking, Megan Gunderson, who I'm always excited to, to hear because um, she just is a genius and she is really the reason that we're here because she makes all of the lovely things that we're drinking today. And then we are also having Broadway star Nick Rouleau come on. And Nick has been in Book of Mormon, Hello Dolly, um, Legally Blonde, I mean, you name it, and he has probably been in it. So we have a really great show for you today. And um, to get started, I'm going to bring on our winemaker, Megan. Let's see if she's here. Yes. And let me make sure I have my wine ready, which I do. Hey, Megan. Hi, Allie. How are you doing? Good. It's so good to see your face. I miss seeing you at the winery all the time. I know. It's been lonely around here. You know, production is, is still in full swing, but we've been missing all of you guys who are, are able to work from home. Yes, same. What have you guys been doing? What What is the current place that you're at in winemaking? Oh, you know, we're not too busy. We're just bottling. We have a six <sighs> bottling run going on right now. So the priority is keeping everyone safe and as, as socially distanced as possible. We want to make sure everyone's healthy. Uh, today, we're bottling the 2018 Napa Valley Cabernet. Oh, and yum. We're up to bottle the, <clears throat> excuse me, the Walt Pinots next and the Baca Zinfandels. The other day, we had a, a bottling approval tasting where we tasted through the full lineup of the 2019 vintage. And we're mm. excited about these upcoming Zinfandels. What was your favorite one from the 2019 lineup so far? You know, I always have a, spot, a soft spot for a double Dutch. For mm -hmm. two. That's my favorite. Yeah, I love double Dutch. Well, speaking of wine, I have some. If you would like a glass with me, we're drinking. Today, we're going to drink the, um, it's backwards, but it's called Pinch Hitter, and it's Baca's newest wine. It's the first wine that we've made um, that's not a Zinfandel, so it's a Carignan, which you can tell us a little bit more about. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're ready, I will just virtually pass down the bottle, and whoa, oh, you got it. You got it. Amazing. Pour a little bit here. All right, yeah. Let me make sure I've got some. So Karen is a really fun varietal. It's Spanish in origin, mm -hmm. so um, came from Spain, and tends to be a very prolific producer. Produces a lot of fruit, a lot of grapes, and it really does well here in California because um, – it's planted, this particular vineyard is the Hamar Vineyard in Alexander Valley. So mm -hmm. it's planted on rolling hills between Highway 101 and Deutcher Creek Road, for those of you who know the area. And it's very rocky, limiting soils, higher elevation. And these vines are 120 years old. I mean, how mm -hmm. amazing is that? They were planted That's in 1900. That's insane. And so how many, what's the difference between harvesting grapes from just you know a normal i guess what's the what is the typical life span of a vine and then what's the difference between a you know grapes from a newer vine and then grapes from a hundred year old vine so it really depends on the varietal and where you are in the world um you know there are, are vineyards that are that can live for hundreds of years there are some vineyards you know if you have disease pressure or certain pests in the area you know, vines can get sick just like we do, and then you have right. to pull that vineyard out and redevelop it. So I would say here in California, the average is about 25 to 30 years. Mm -hmm. But this vineyard, this Carignan from Hamar, I mean, because it's limited soils, because these vines are so old, the yields are very low. So they're head-trained vines. They're not on a trellising system. So they look like these giant, giant and compact at the same time. You have these mm -hmm. big arms, but they're very short. Um, and they just, the canopy kind of sprawls and protects the fruit from the sun and oh. uh, bigger clusters, but you get a lot of richness and concentration because of that vineyard site and because of the age of these vines. Okay. 
And that's Zinfandel grapes typically are also older, right? Yeah, we actually sourced this vineyard initially as a, as a blender for our Zinfandels. You, you don't see Carignan alone. It's usually in a mixed, um, a mixed planting or used as a blending varietal for Zinfandel to bring weight to the palate, to bring some earthiness mm. to Zinfandel, which can tend to be very fruity. And so we did uh, blend a little bit of this particular Carignan into our Zinfandel blends in 2018. But it was so delicious and so intriguing that we decided to save a couple of barrels and do a standalone bottling. Yeah. I was like, so. hey, I'm the star of the show now. So, mm -hmm. okay, well, I will say, I mean, the grapes are amazing, but it when it turned into wine, this is delicious. I've only, this is, we just released this and I've only had it a few times, but um, this is a really, a really, I want to say it's a lot more delicate than our Zinfandel. It's, it's, it's very floral. Is yes. that correct? Or is that way off? No, it's great. I mean, whatever you smell in a wine is correct. You know, you okay. can't go wrong. So right. I get floral, I get white strawberry, I get some earthiness, mm -hmm. some forest floor. And then this is, Carignan is a great food wine. It, it tends to have umami on the palate. You know what umami is? Yeah. Like savory, spicy note to it. So mm -hmm. this will be great with pretty much anything you want to pair it with. Well, that's good to know. I always think of Pinot as being a really good mm -hmm. pairing wine, but I can see that this, yeah. Well, now that I have, you know, the bottle open, I'll have no choice but to drink it tonight. So I can't wait to probably order takeout, but I will try to, <laughs> I'll try to pair it well. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much co for coming on, Megan. It is mm -hmm. so lovely to see your face. I can't wait until I can see you again in person, but um but thanks for joining and sharing so much more wine information than I will ever know. <laughs> You're welcome, Ali. I can't wait to see you again. Have fun sipping up with Nick, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. So now I've already mentioned um, our guest that's coming up, but I'm just going to give everybody a little bit of a reminder that our guest coming on um, is Broadway star Nick Rouleau. He has been in Book of Mormon. He was touring with Hello Dolly. I think he was in Les Mis for a little bit. He did um, Legally Blonde. He's been really all over the Broadway world. And we're so excited that he's coming to join us um, on today's on today's happy hour. There's also kind of a, um, Nick and I have a fun connection, which is that one of my roommates is actually his cousin. So, hey, Nick. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's so good to see you. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Good. Where are you sheltering in place from? I'm sheltering in place in New York City, Upper mm -hmm. West Side of Manhattan, in the heart of where sort of COVID had its first huge outbreak here. <laughs> right. How is it now? Honestly, things are good, knock on wood, going a lot better. <laughs> um, it seems like we're now going down and everyone else in the country is going up. Yeah. Uh, which is crazy. So I'm like, hey, listen to what we went through. You don't want to go through it. So like, wear your mask. <laughs> yeah, you guys definitely got the hard part hopefully out of the way a little bit earlier than the rest of us, but yeah. we're glad that you're staying safe. And Thanks. could I offer you a glass of wine? Please, I would love, I've got my empty glass here if you wouldn't mind okay. um, filling it up. Yes, I would love to. So I will, um, I will be, <laughs> if you hold your glass up then I can magically pour you some wine. All right, let's see. Okay, all right, ready? Uh-huh, oh, 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 oh. Wow. And there you go. Wow. That's amazing. My glass also miraculously became a little bit fuller as well. So <laughs> it's a win-win. Cheers. Cheers. Drink up. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, so we will talk a little bit more about this wine in a second. But first, I have a little Broadway-themed game that I would like to play with you. And I think <laughs> that the wine will help with it, hopefully. Amazing. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to... It's kind of like finish the lyrics, but it's mostly just I'm going to show a picture of the, I guess, the kind of the playbill from the from a few musicals. And then I want you to either sing or say the first line that makes you think of that musical. OK. 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 All right. Oh, I'm nervous. Don't be nervous. I'm sure <laughs> that you'll be great. We'll start out with an easy one. OK. OK. Oh. Yeah, Hamilton. The I'm sky sure is sisters. Angelica, Peggy, Eliza, work. 
<laughs> Amazing. Right? See, I told you you'd know it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. We'll go for an oldie but a goodie. Oh, I love this show. Uh, what's that song? Oh, on my own, pretending he's beside me. I'm like itching to sing along with you, but I do not Please. have a good voice, so I can't, <laughs> can't do it. I'll let you steal the show on this one. Okay. Here's kind of a new one. Oh, yeah. Kinky Boots. Um, what is that awesome song? Oh, the sex is in the heels. <laughs> da, 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 da. I love that show. Yeah. That's one of the okay. ones that I haven't seen, but that I've been. I'm really hoping once everything opens up that that's like top of my list. Awesome. Um, okay. One more that I think you'll probably know. No, can't not say no. any songs from this show. It just doesn't Yeah, look it's really, good. it's not well known. No one, I mean, you probably haven't heard of it. <laughs> Ding dong. Literally, I was <laughs> telling you earlier, I said, literally doorbells have been following me since I left the show. Like everywhere you hear a doorbell, I just think Book of Mormon and just brings me back. Like, hello, my name is Elder Price. <laughs> everywhere. Uh, okay, well, you got five out of five. So well done. Round of applause. Uh, take a celebratory drink. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you earned it. <laughs> I didn't earn it, but I will join you. <laughs> uh, okay. So let's talk a little bit more about this wine. Okay. Well, first I will say, to me, I've always thought that wine is one of those drinks that you kind of associate with memories or with the place that you were when you were drinking it. So I'm wondering what's your favorite memory that you associate with wine? Oh, I mean, I love wine and I have a lot of memories associated, but you're right. It's always about like where you had it. So exactly. a couple of years ago, I got to go to the South of France and mm -hmm. I got to have wine there, which was amazing. And just like looking out at the rolling hills and the lavender fields and drinking mm -hmm. all this wine there. We went to a Chateauneuf de Pop, I believe is how you say it. I think okay. that's right. I um, believe you. And so we were just drinking all those wines and it was amazing. But um. A couple of years before that, I actually went out to Napa and I went to Hall and I remember okay. like being in the tasting room and my cousin Paul was working there then and he set us mm -hmm. up with like amazing tastings. And um, and obviously your guys' grounds are like absolutely beautiful. So I have such a like fond memory of that too. Oh, good. Well, thank you for, for saying that. We can't wait for you to come back. As soon as you're mm -hmm. able to travel, we would love for you to come back. Um, we have a few new tasting rooms now for Abaca. We recently opened up a tasting room in Healdsburg Oh, nice. um, which is about an hour from Napa, but it's this really cute town. Um, and we'll have to get My you parents there. go there all the time to go wine. Oh, really? I think they've actually been to Baca a few times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll have to, we can do an entire, I know you've got a lot of family up here, so we'll do, you can do like a whole family <laughs> trip out to the wine. Amazing, wine. amazing. Um, so this wine, I, I'm, did you hear when we were talking to Megan earlier a little bit? Mm hmm So she definitely can describe it better than I than I ever can, but um, but I think that this is just, Baca has always been, we've all, always only had Zinfandels for the entire portfolio. And then this is the first one that they've ever kind of expanded to. And I'm so glad that they did because it's just, I don't know, it's very, it's very light. I think a lot of times Zinfandels are um, richer and more fuller bodied. Definitely. And, um, I think that this is a really nice, yeah, just it's, it's really um, good. Yeah. What I love like about it. all of your guys' wines, like Hall, Baca, Walt, and, and I mean this in the best way, is they're all so distinct and like unlike mm -hmm. I feel like I've never tasted wine like that anywhere else. They all have a very like bold a lot of them are very bold, but have like a very mm -hmm. definitive, unique individual flavor, which is really cool. So I was telling you, like I drank last week, we were drinking double dutch oh, from yeah. Baca's in, which was so good. And mm -hmm. and I've had a few cans of the uh rosé was it ring around the rosé in the can it is, yeah so good <laughs> so good have you tried we have um we have the our first vintage which was the 2018 but then we have the new one which are like a, they're skinnier cans i think that oh. maybe we sent you some but if not we i'll um i'll definitely send you some because they're um they're a lot smaller which i think is probably for the best because originally the cans were half a bottle of wine which you know if you're not Paying attention mm -hmm. can yep, really turn your night around. You. <laughs> <laughs> so a third just feels a lot more manageable. <laughs> <laughs> so good. But yeah, but this is so good. And I've also never had this type of wine. Honestly, I've never even heard of it until you guys sent it to me for this tasting. And it's, it's so nice. We're ordering Thai food tonight. So I think mm. with a little bit of the spice from the Thai food, this is going to go actually really nicely with it. Yeah, I think 
I mean, it sounds like Megan said that this could basically go with almost anything that you want. So sounds perfect. Um, okay, well, I have just a few questions that I've always, I mean, I've grown up loving Broadway. So I have so many questions to ask. You all. <laughs> I'm sure the audience does too. But um, my first question is, when did you know that you wanted to do Broadway? Did you just realize that you could sing, dance, act, and wanted to combine them all? Or did you like one of those originally or yeah I mean like out? ever since I was a little boy my my parents will tell you I was like singing and dancing and putting on shows around the house mm -hmm. there's this like photo of me like in my underwear with like a beanie on my head and I'm just like performing shows in front of the television <laughs> yeah so I think my mom recognized like early on that like I had a love for singing and like performing so she put me in the school choir and then mm -hmm. she put me in children's theater in Mountain View at Peninsula Youth Theater and okay. I grew up doing shows there until I went to college and so like after like two shows, I think I quickly realized like, I love this. It's like giving me so much joy and happiness. Um, I feel like I belong in this community. And so I just never wanted to not do it. So right. um, yeah, so that kind of was like when I was bitten by the bug and I just never stopped. That's awesome. We have a question that says, what show that you haven't been in would you like to be in? So and then I, I have a piggyback question, which is what's one show that you auditioned for that you didn't get? that you still think about? Yeah, well, I would love to be in Hamilton. Like who wouldn't? I would love to play right, King yeah. George, <laughs> which is just like, he's like the comedic relief of the show. He's got like three songs. He barely does anything, but like he's one of the most memorable characters. Right. I just love that role so much. That would be an ultimate dream, but I've yeah. never auditioned for it. But one of the shows that I auditioned for that I didn't get, which is fine, but that I would still love to do one day is Waitress, the Sarah Bareilles mm -hmm. musical that mm -hmm. they had. Unfortunately, it's no longer on Broadway anymore, but if anyone does it like regionally in the country, you know, yeah. uh, sign me I'll, up. I'll I tell them to you. call you, yeah. I'll thank put you, some feelers out, so yeah. <laughs> I, I know have an audition for it, but it was so <laughs> bad. It was such a bad audition. Oh no. And uh, so I need, I need a do-over. I need a, a second chance. Well, I guess not quite as, as heartbreaking, but in sixth grade, I tried out for the school choir and I tried out with Love Song by Sarah Bareilles and did not make it, so. <laughs> That's, I guess, a very similar role that I wanted, and it didn't work out, so. I love that Love Cursed. Song was around when you were in sixth grade. Now you're making me feel older than I thought that I was, but thank you. <laughs> it was old at the time. It was uh -huh, old. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, not, not recently coming up or anything <laughs> like that. Yeah, well, that's so fun. Have you, because um, Hamilton is, they're coming out, um, I think, on Disney Plus with, like, a recorded yeah. version of the show do you think that that's the direction that broadway is going to be going into now that you know we don't know when we're coming back or no. or what do you think it'll be really interesting to see because you know luckily for hamilton they had this all filmed way before any of this epidemic happened like right oh, now right. we can't even step foot into a broadway theater um to even like you can't even go backstage to get your stuff which is crazy and they just announced today that broadway won't even really be possibly up and running until like January 2021 at the earliest. And I think it's going to be even later than that. Right. So it's, it's kind of, a, it's, a, it's definitely a really sad time for the Broadway community. And yeah. I know it's, I've got a lot of friends who are just, you know, aside from just losing your job, just bombed, like what sort of gives you your joy in life, we can't really mm -hmm. do like we used to. And right. so we're having to find new ways to, to feel artistic and creative. So things like this on Instagram and people, yeah. are, you, know, you know, performing songs and, and making dances and doing like virtual play readings. So, you mm -hmm. know, the theater community is resilient and we always push through and we will survive, but um, it's definitely a, a tough time. Yeah, definitely. Have you felt like there was, there's an increased sense of community now that you're all kind of going through the same issues yeah, I mean, within yeah. Broadway or what's kind of nice is I feel like so many people in the theater community especially when this first happened will tell you they were like I needed a break like I needed some downtime I worked so hard and so right. to just like relax and not have any pressure has been nice but now that it's been like three or four months and now we know it's going to be another six to eight months uh yeah we're definitely <laughs> gonna get a little itchy but yeah you do you know you do come together as a community and you know i'm still mm. taking like some acting classes online and i feel oh, yeah. closer to those people than ever just because you you want to be creative with someone so those are the people i'm being creative with so it's sort of strengthening that relationship which is really cool yeah that's so wonderful there's just been definitely benefits that have come out of shelter in place where i mean i'm spending so much more time with 
my roommates and, you know, I've been, I've had Zoom calls with my high school friends that, you know, we'd kept in touch, but it wasn't like we are now. And, um, yeah. and I think there's definitely been some, some benefits. I also, this is the first excuse I've had to put any makeup on in four months. So that's I, kind of nice. I have buttons on my shirt. I didn't know that yeah. these existed these? in the last four yeah. months. <laughs> I'm like, this isn't a t-shirt, so I'm just a little confused, but. I was say, maybe I'm still wearing like sweatpants on the bottom, but you'll never know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the Zoom outfit where you just dress from the top up. Exactly. Well, I did want, since you brought up that you've been singing a lot during quarantine, I'm wondering if there's any chance that you maybe would sing for us now. Oh, mate. All right. If you pull okay. my leg, I'll sing a little something. <laughs> okay. Um, let me uh, get my computer ready to go. I figured I'd do a little, uh, I'm gonna do an oldie but a goodie and I'm gonna go mm -hmm. back to um, a, an old Gershwin song, Someone to Watch Over Me, which is one of my favorite Gershwin songs. Oh, I love that song. All right. You can hear that? Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, <laughs> There's a somebody I'm longing to see. I hope that he turns out to be someone who watch over me. I'm a little lamb who's lost in the I know I could always be good to one who watch over me. Although he may not be the man some I think of as handsome, to my heart, he carries the key. Won't you tell him, please, to put on some speed? Follow my lead, oh, how I need someone who watch over me. I've never had a private concert before. That was so <laughs> lovely. Thank you. That was like the first time I've sang in front of people in like three months. <laughs> well, I'm sure everybody is clapping along at home. Someone commented that you are the songbird of our generation. <laughs> and I'm I will say that was probably one of my cousins writing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't. I won't look back. We'll just Okay, assume. okay, okay. We'll take, I'll take it. I'll take the call. Yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> wow. That was so, I mean... I feel like the only place that I ever sound marginally good is like in the shower because no one can hear me. And then miraculously, when I am in public, it just doesn't sound quite as good. But you sound amazing. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. You should, you should look into doing this professionally. I'll think about it. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm kind of busy at the moment, though. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> busy home just... drinking wine. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so I have a few questions from the audience that I think we have time for. Great. Oh, here's one. So it says, how are you celebrating Pride? Which yeah. I love this question. I love that. Well, Happy Pride know, Month. Happy, thank you. You know, I guess I'm celebrating Pride. Well, I can't go to a parade. Um, and, uh, you know, things are a little dicey here in New York, uh, just with, you know, being in large public places with people. So me and my fiance, we celebrated Pride uh, by planning our wedding. <laughs> so we're getting married upstate New York in September. Fingers crossed, oh knock on wood, if, if we can. So he and I are celebrating. Thank you. We're celebrating Pride just by figuring out what a sort of socially distanced uh, coronavirus wedding will wedding. look like. 
which is how, tough. How has it been impacting the pl Is it harder to plan because there's less places available or easier because everyone's canceling their reservations? Yeah. I mean, luckily we already had our venue lined up like long before this. Um, mm -hmm. And they've been, you know, they're mostly a private property. So they're a little more flexible in terms of like events. Um, so they've been so generous with us and just sort of being patient. And we're kind of just going forward with it, hoping that mm -hmm. by the end of September, we're going to be okay to have, it's going to be probably about 50 people. So it's going to be really small. But, you yeah. know, I had a huge family from California. You know, you live with one of my cousins. So, you know, like the Dagoni <laughs> clan is huge. Um, also, shout out to my grandpa, who's 95 today. Grandpa happy Dagoni, birthday, grandpa. happy 95, fifth birthday. Um, but, you know, a lot of my family now, just can't come because of coronavirus. Mm -hmm. So my, my parents and my siblings will be there, but a lot of my extended family, aunts, uncles, cousins, and nieces and nephews just won't be able to make it. So we'll have a small gathering, hopefully in September, and then I'm gonna come back to California maybe around Christmas, and hopefully by then yeah. we can throw like a huge bash. Exactly, and even if, I mean, I'm sure Paul and Eric and could all FaceTime in or something for, for part of it just to say Yeah, hey. I think I'm going to send out like a big Zoom link and put one of my yeah. friends in charge of just Zooming, even just the ceremony, just like 15 mm -hmm. minutes of the ceremony. And that way people can feel like they're a part of it, which would be nice. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm sorry that it's not going to be as big as you're wanting, but I bet it'll uh -huh. turn out even better than you were thinking. Thank you. Yeah, you know, we're, we're excited now. We went through that. We already went through the emotions of like, oh, should we just cancel? And this is a bummer. But now we're, we're excited about what it's going to turn out to be. Yeah. Well, you can always come and honeymoon in Napa and then come wine tasting and then kind of double up and see all of your family here. There we go. Does Hall Wine still own that hotel in Napa? Senza, yeah, we do. That's where the, the first time and only time I've stayed in Napa, that's where I stayed. Really? Yeah, it was so it's, beautiful. It, it, yeah, I got to stay there once um, just because they had an opening and were just nice enough to extend it um, to me and oh my gosh, it is stunning. And it's such a good location. We stayed in one of the rooms that has the, the vineyards just like right outside your patio oh, yeah. door. So we just like snuck off and ate grapes. I don't know if we were allowed to or not, but we did. <laughs> yeah, well, I won't tell anyone. Well, now they None know. None of the Sorry, people Paul. watching. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's our secret. <laughs> okay, we have another one. Oh, this is it says, any tips for people who want to be on Broadway like you one day? This was my friend, actually, that I was telling you about that went to Tish. Hi, Sarah. Um, oh, thanks yeah. for watching. NYU, represent. I love that. I mean, it, it's a tough business and it's tougher now. But um, I guess my tip is, my tip is always to, um, to make good connections with people in the business and be nice to people. Um, reputation is everything in this business. So, you know, if you get a bad reputation, it's hard to sort of fight past that, I guess, in any business, right. really. So yeah. I always say, like, show up to work, work really hard and be a good person. And you're going to that's going to help you go so much further. That's such good advice, just in general. I mean, I've always within the wine industry as well. It's so connection based. I mean, it feels like such a small town. Any event that you go to, there's people and you're like, oh, you I did a tasting with you over there. And then you came over. You know, it's just so referral based and networking based absolutely um, and i'm i think that's just such a good tip just in general okay so i have one last question okay. and the question is if you could compare this wine to any song any song at all what um, would you pick mm. One of my favorite songs, and maybe this is just because wine makes me happy. One of my favorite songs in the world is a song called Make Someone Happy that one of my <laughs> favorite Broadway performers sings. Her name is Kelly O'Hara. Um, but it's an old um, Harold Arlen song. And okay. I just love it. And this wine makes me happy, like that song. So that's what it makes me think of. Well, we love that. <laughs> that's, what, that's what wine's here for. And especially during quarantine, I'm hoping that everyone is drinking just a little bit more of it than normal. <laughs> I know I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same. Same. Okay, well, it was so lovely to speak with you, Nick. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for um, having me. This was awesome. And we, can't, we cannot wait you, for you to come to Napa, um, hopefully as a little honeymoon. Um, yes. And congrats again on, on your upcoming wedding. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Cheers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh my gosh. Well, that was just so much fun. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in. We have lots of ways for everyone to join us for a happy hour.
um, all week. And one that I'm really looking forward to is that on Friday, we have Catherine O'Hara joining us on Facebook Live at Baca Wines. You'll know her from Schitt's Creek, from, um, from Best in Show, Beetlejuice, Home Alone. I mean, so many things. And so she'll be joined by Catherine Hall on Facebook on Friday. And we hope to see you all there. Cheers. <laughs>